Hey everyone, so in this video or video series, I haven't decided yet, I want to do a project based on one of the challenges from Front End Mentor, and specifically it's going to be this one, the REST Countries API. The only one that I saw that has an API component to it, and I think this will be fun because I need to work on my CSS anyways. And I miss writing Angular, so this project's going to be in Angular. We're going to create a new project using the Angular CLI which you can just write ng new and I think I'm just going to call it countries and I know I want routing and let's choose scss for our styling all right once that's created you're going to want to download the starter files which I've already done so just open up your file manager And go into wherever you downloaded that, and we're gonna copy all these files. Let's go back to our project, and before I paste, I'm gonna rename the README to something like ng readme markdown, just so it doesn't overwrite. And we'll paste everything here, and then let's open it up in our editor. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is open up the style guide and our global CSS, and let's set up some variables. So I'm gonna use just the regular CSS variables and not the SAS ones. And these are gonna be the colors. I'm gonna rename all these to what they represent. So this, is, this one is dark mode elements, so D elements. And this one's for dark mode text and elements. So I'm just gonna change this to white and set the variable to the element and the text. I don't know why there's no color for the input for dark mode, but we'll find that out, I guess. All right, let's scroll down. And for fonts, we're gonna use Nuno to Sans. And I'm just gonna go grab it from Google Fonts. The weights that we're using is 300, 600, and 800 or 900. 800. So let's get the embed. I want the import here. Copy this and add it up here. And for icons, let's just use font awesome. So yarn add font awesome. I believe that's the npm package. Okay, let's make that available. So inside of angular.json, we're going to update the styles array to include the path to font awesome. Okay, I know it's in node modules, but I don't remember the exact path. So I'm gonna open up node modules. I don't recommend doing this because there's a lot of stuff. Where is it? Okay, slash font awesome slash sass slash font awesome. Okay. So awesome SCSS awesome.scss should make it available to us globally in our application and then finally let's just add a very simple reset margin zero padding zero this will make styling easier for us later down the road so i think we could just ng serve this now ng serve and see what we're working with it's gonna take a while to compile the first time but after this, ng-serve will be a lot faster. So it's compiled successfully. Let's go to localhost 420 and see what we're working with first. Whoa, that's new. I haven't worked with Angular since version eight, so this is a new landing page for me. All right, well, let's go clean this up. Um, that'll be the app component, HTML, and I'm just gonna delete basically everything, except for this router link on the bottom. Cool. So we have a fresh slate. Let's let's get to work. So first, I want to create a way to manage the theme of the page. So to do this, I'm gonna have a div that either says dark or light, so that we have a theme over our page, and we can do dark mode and light mode. And to keep track of this, I'm gonna generate a service called theme, and it's gonna go inside of a folder called services. The theme service is gonna be provided in root, so we don't have to add it to our module dependency array. And first, I'm gonna make an enumeration called theme. 
where we get tr keep track of the the mode of the theme for our application. We'll have light and dark, and we'll keep it in a private variable called mode. Except this is actually going to be a behavior subject of that theme. I'm going to instantiate with just the dark theme at first. Now, what a behavior subject is, it's basically an observable that we have access to the current value and also a way to influence the next value coming going in. So to make this available, we'll get we'll add a getter for mode and we'll return the private mode as a as an observable. We'll also add a method here called toggle mode, which will just be a simple conditional where we set the next value of theme to be either light or dark. And now in our app component, I'm gonna get rid of title because we don't need it. But we'll inject the theme service. And I'm gonna want to implement on init. So when this component is mounted, we could grab the mode and we'll save it in an observable called theme. So make sure to assign it here. So this.theme equals to this.theme service.mode. Now usually you want to do a subscription on an observable to get the value. However, we can do that in our HTML using the async pipe. We'll just do theme and then pipe it to async, which is given to us by Angular. We'll have to change class to ng class and then the bracket notation so we have access to the components variables. And just to make things a little easier, let's give it a default CSS class of app. So in our app component styles, I'm gonna give it a default height of 100% view height, or actually min height, so we can see this. But based on the theme, we can just do the background color and set it to the variables that we have in our global styles, as well as text color. And of course, we do want to toggle these, this theme We'll add it in the app component for now, but we'll move this to the nav bar when we create it. But the method of toggle theme will just say this dot theme service dot toggle mode. In our HTML, we'll just add a button to toggle it and it has a click method to call that function. Now in our browser, there's our little button here. But we can see that we're toggling the, the theme. So we don't need that anymore. So let's get rid of it and our component as well. And let's go create that nav bar. So let's generate a component. And I want a component directory for the nav bar. And before I forget, let's just add it to the app HTML. That'll be app nav bar. And let's open up the navbar stuff. Right now it just says navbar works, which is fine. Oh, I forgot to add the text. So let's go back to styles, add a body, set the font family to Nunito Sans, and then Sans Serif as the fallback. Yep, that's better. All right, I'm gonna open up GIMP so that I can check out the design files. Okay, let's blow this up to 100%. And this to 100%, just so I can get some measurements. 24, this looks like 80, this looks like 62. So in navbar styles, let's add a style tag for the nav. The brand I'm going to put in as an H2. The font size looked like it was around 24 pixels. So just some flexbox styles to make sure that those two are spaced evenly apart. And then the padding came out to be around four rim top and bottom and then two rim left and right for mobile. And then for desktop breakpoint at 376 pixels, the padding there was around 175 rim, two rim. All right, and then in our HTML, we could get rid of this. Add a nav, the header is gonna be saying where in the world? And then we'll have a div here where the span is gonna have the font awesome icon of a moon dash O. And then another span that just says dark mode. Um, I want some space here, so let's just add an interpolation of the space. 
That looks a bit better. I want access to the theme around the entire app container. So normally in CSS, it would be dot the class name followed by the element selector. But in Angular, all the styles are already scoped. So we have to use a special selector called host context. That will act as if Angular is looking at it as if there was no scoping. So we'll add the element colors for the themes accordingly. And that looks almost right. Let's check if it's responsive. So that does not look good. Now right, let's see. So let's change this mobile one. I think it's going to be two and one. And the H2 is going to be 20 pixels instead. Instead of two rem here, I think it's actually going to be five rems. And then finally, the font weight of the dark mode text needs to actually be at 600. So semi-bold. That looks better. Oh, I didn't add the toggle. So yeah, let's go do that. So in nav bar component, we'll need to inject the theme service so that we can call that method. This dot theme service dot toggle mode. I'm going to get rid of this on and net because we don't need it. And then in the HTML, we will need to call this function. So let's add a click handler that runs the toggle theme function or method, whatever. So now, I think we also want a shadow. So in the global styles, I'm going to add a shadow class. Because I think we're going to definitely reuse this in other places around the app. And this box shadow is the one that's used by Tailwind. So I just copied the values over. But in the nav bar component, I'm just going to add the class name here. Of shadow. And that looks... I mean, you can't really see in the dark mode. But in the light mode, it looks much better. All right, so I think that's a good stopping point if we're going to split this up into a video series. But let's just make a quick commit here. And I don't know, let's give it a message of setup, theme, and navbar. That means in the next video, we'll actually interact with the API, create some cards for the countries and stuff. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And I'll see you all next time.